Hey guys, this is Jacob Hart with High Point Land Company. We wanted to talk this week about farmland as an investment. What is it? If you buy a farm, own a farm, have your farm managed, rent your farm out, what does it all mean as farmland as an investment? That, that loosely gets thrown around. Um, a sale happens at an auction and an investor buys it. We literally just had a sale, an auction sale today and the classification of the buyer was is an investor bought it. So that loosely gets thrown around as farmland as an investment. Farmland as an investment is very um, daunting as a task because it's not like you can you can just hop on your stock market app or you can hop on social media. I mean, it's a it's a boring investment as uh, as investments go because it's simple, because it's easy, and because it's it's really stable. It's not you know something that's going to fluctuate greatly in price um, from year to year. It's not something you can measure on an app on your phone um, based on you know what another property might be worth. Um, so farmland as an investment is what I want to explain to you today to try to help you out in, in case you're interested in farmland as an investment. Just a disclaimer, this is not financial advice. This is a no way purchasing advice. I'm a real estate broker in about five states currently. Um, we sell a lot of farmland and I think it's very important for people to make good decisions when it comes to farmland as an investment and offer uh, information about farmland um, because it's been really great to a lot of clients of mine as well as, as me personally and I, I love everything about farmland. So let's get into it. Um, let's say that you purchase a farm in the state of Iowa, for example. Um, your primary crops are going to be corn and soybeans in the state of Iowa. There's also hay, um, there's a lot of other crops that, that happen uh, organically or foods that go into uh, canned foods like sweet corn and, and peas and beans and tons of other products that can be grown on high quality farmland. Um, the majority of the farmland in the state of Iowa, for example, isn't irrigated. So when you look at farms in the south or in the west, we have so much moisture in the Midwest, a lot of times it's about drain tile, tiling the water away to make sure the roots uh, of the plant don't have wet feet. Uh, so we want to tile the water away because it rains so much in the Midwest. Um, there is a lot of irrigated farms, but they're further and fewer between than what you would maybe expect in other parts of the country. So for example, let's just talk about um, corn and soybean farm in the state of Iowa, as simple as it gets farmland investment. Let's say that that farm is purchased for $10,000 an acre for just conversation purposes, and it's an 80 acre tract. An 80 acre tract would be half of a quarter section. So let's say that you purchased that farm for $800,000, which would be uh, $10,000 an acre times 80 acres, $800,000 purchase price, right? Um, that farm is going to have a couple options. You can farm it yourself, which if you're buying farmland as an investment, more than likely you're going to rent it out to a local farmer. What does that mean? I'm gonna break this down all the way through the process and I'm sure a lot of folks rent, uh, uh, looking at this video have way more knowledge on the topic of farming it yourself than I do, uh, than uh, uh, renting it, putting different crops on it, making a development land, you name it. But we're keeping it simple. Farmland as an investment, rent it out to a tenant who is a farmer, who has a business of a farmer. That farmer is planting corn and soybeans. They are uh, hauling their own grain to a local grain market. Uh, the corn and soybeans are gonna be used for many, many different products. If you look up what corn and soybeans is used for that's grown in Iowa, for example, you will find a list of products a mile long from toothpaste to soda, to ethanol, to uh, feed for chickens and pigs and, and cows and um, the diversity of what corn and soybeans is used for in the world makes corn and soybeans as a crop and as a commodity a very stable. It fluctuates in price, but it's a very stable thing to grow on a farm and that thing when it's grown on a farm is used for a lot of other products. It not, it's not like it just goes to ethanol. It's not like it just goes to you know one type of uh, um, product or another. It has a really diverse range. So back to the numbers, $800,000 farm, $10,000 an acre, 80 acres. You're gonna rent it to a local farmer for $400 an acre. We rent these farms anywhere from 250 to over $600 an acre. Really depends on the soil quality, on the drainage, on the size, on the efficiency of the operation, on the operator, on the competitiveness of the market, on uh, um, uh, location of markets where you're going to take the crop, on manure applications that come from uh, chickens and pigs and cows and that sort of thing. So middle of the road, $400 an acre. And let's say that that's not all tillable farmland. Let's say 78 of the 80 acres is tillable farmland. So to figure out what the farm is going to bring in, we're going to take $400 an acre times 78 acres, and that's going to equal $31,200 in annual gross income. That annual gross income is going to have uh, a couple expenses coming off of them, primarily property taxes, 
and insurance. Insurance is going to be a couple hundred dollars, so I use $200 for an example, and uh, um, uh, $13 an acre in property taxes in the state of Iowa, for example, uh, could be a very easy number. So $1,240 in annual expenses minus $31,200 equals $29,960 of annual income. You can also have an accelerator on your lease. We manage a lot of farms all over the country, and those farms, uh, if they have a base of uh, uh, X amount of dollars with an accelerator that uh, gives the landlord the opportunity to take advantage of the grain market in the event it goes up, uh, giving the farmland, uh, giving the farmer a base lease with a opportunity in the event the corn or soybean market goes double or triple, um, that you're protected, and it gives the operator a chance to do a long-term lease, maybe three to five years and do more work on the fertility and the organic matter buildup on the farm to help it yield more in the future. They're running a business out there. They want it to be profitable. They want it to grow big yields. They want it to they want to take care of the farm because it's in their best interest as a farmer tenant to take care of the farm because they grow higher yields and they can make more money for their business. Um, okay, so let's divide that 29960 in annual income without the accelerator, keeping it simple, by our $800,000 purchase price and we get 3.74% annual rate of return. If you have somebody manage the farm for you, let's say you want to be hands off completely and you hire a farm manager, we do this all the time for folks, um, farm management fees range anywhere from 5 to 7%, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, but uh, that's, that's where farm management fees are usually going to land in the farm management world. Um, so you would have um, 5%, 6%, 7% taken off of that 29,960. If you had somebody pay the property taxes for you, communicate with the tenant, um, do the leases, make sure the fertility was good, make sure the drain tile was working, make sure the ditches were clean, make sure the in drives were good, make sure the fence was good, you name it. I can't say enough about farm managers and how they take care of a farm and then if you decide to sell that farm, how much more that property can be worth in the event you have a good farm manager. It's well worth the uh, little fee that you would pay them out of the annual income that you have on the farm if you're able to find a good Good one. Um, why would somebody buy farmland as an investment? One, it's simple. It's very simple uh, compared to apartments, commercial property, uh, other types of uh, assets, storage facilities, trailer courts, residential, commercial, uh, other types of business. You look at it and it's got a very low ROI. That means it has a very uh, low maintenance. Um, number that that you're going to have to be involved in i mean they're not gonna you're not going to get a call and say you have a plugged toilet or you have this problem with the door or you have this problem with this or that a lot of times that farmer tenant is going to take care of those issues because again they're running a business on your property and the more efficient and better care they take of that property the more their operation can profit so it's in their best interest compared to a residential house tenant for example that might not take as, as good a care of your residential rental property so your management fees can really fluctuate uh, to be substantially cheaper or maybe you don't need a farm manager and you do it yourself it can be very easy to do that in the event you have a good tenant so a lot of questions to get answered there but again keeping it simple why would somebody buy farmland as an investment and how does it work those are the numbers on the ROI and usually that rent is going to be collected once a year up front before the crop is ever put in the ground. So again, making the management easier, if you can collect rent once a year in March or even once half a year, half of the year up front in March and the other half in November when the crops are harvested, that becomes easier than collecting monthly rent on a rental property or on a storage facility or on a commercial property in different asset classes. Those have higher ROIs, but they also have higher management, um, higher vacancy ratios, that sort of thing. That comes to our second topic is vacancy. I have never seen a farm that was not able to be rented in the state of Iowa, for example. There's always many, many tenants. I'm sure there's one out there uh, that I don't know about, but we as a company have never been involved in a farm that was not rentable. Folks ask all the time, do you think there's going to be somebody interested in renting my farm or something happened to my current tenant, I want to um, get rid of that relationship. Do you think it's possible to uh, find another farmland tenant? The answer is always yes. And we have many, many, many people looking to rent high quality ground in the state of Iowa, for example, or all tillable land. And you can either rent it out to a local tenant off market, or you can even put the opportunity for the farm rental up for bids and do an auction much like we do when we go to sell certain types of farms. So uh, there's so many people looking to rent land that they can compete to rent the land for a higher price based on the efficiency and the crops that their operation focuses on. Number three, depreciation. People say you can't depreciate 
raw land. In my experience, uh, that's uh, different. You can depreciate the drain tile system that's in the property. When you go purchase it, let's say the drain tile system is worth $700 an acre times our 80 acre tract or 78 tillable acres. That is a potential depreciation opportunity to save money on taxes. You can depreciate the terracing, fence, and in some places, excess fertility that might be built up in the soils if you have soil sampling done and uh, um, prepare the um, prepare the excess fertility depreciation schedule to go offset the income and, to, and take that off the basis on the farm. Again, not financial advice, do your own due diligence on the topic, but it's very common for these things to come up on the topic of land investment as depreciation opportunities, much like commercial and residential depreciating the, uh, the commercial or residential building or a cost segregation study. The last one is appreciation. Land goes up in value. So the farm might be worth 10,000 a day, 11,000 tomorrow, 15,000 the next day, 20,000 the next day. Land over time, if you look back in history, much like the stock market goes up over time in value. So appreciation, depreciation, cash flow are the biggest ones. There's also um, a lot of opportunities to switch the type of crop, to uh, switch the cash flow for future development of the land, and it's a tangible asset. The tangibility of farmland is so important. It, it's more than likely going to be a cornfield 10, 20, 30, 50 years from now like it has been for 10, 20, 30, 50 years. The stability of that farm is you own the asset, you own the dirt, and it is going, there's a crop being grown on the property that makes it, uh, a, if, if the crop is a stable crop like corn and soybeans for example, there's a diversity of products, products that that goes into. If that didn't work, I'm confident there's going to be things grown that people consume on high quality dirt in the Midwest for a really long time in the future. So do I think like any investment, it's smart to put all your eggs in one basket? Absolutely not. But farmland has become a question in a lot of people's portfolios. Do I want to invest in farmland? How does the investment work? What does that investment look like? What are the numbers? What are the ROIs? What are the expenses? What can I expect for income? And is anybody going to rent this thing? We are happy to answer any of those questions for you if you're interested in farmland as an investment. Uh, but that just gives you a little bit of a, a look into what farmland as an investment looks like and why other people are doing it in today's market.